Did you know that the average person unknowingly spends thousands of dollars each year on unnecessary expenses? It's staggering, right? But the good news is that becoming more mindful of our spending habits can make a huge difference in our financial health. When we talk about money habits, we're referring to the daily financial decisions we make that can either make or break our bank accounts. These habits can be so routine we often don't even realize we're doing them or the impact they're having on our finances. Welcome back to Empower and Thrive. And if you are new here, welcome. On this channel, we help you take control of your finances, elevate your savings mindset, and give you the tools to empower yourself to live your best life. If you're ready to ditch those bad money habits and start thriving, you're in the right place. Today, we're diving into the five money habits that are keeping you poor. Trust me, breaking these habits could be the game changer you've been looking for. Let's get started. So, what are some of the common habits that may be draining your wallet without you realizing it? Not tracking expenses is a huge money draining habit. When we don't keep track of where our money is going, it's easy to lose sight of our spending and end up overspending. And let's not forget about impulse shopping. We've all been there, browsing through a store or scrolling through social media and suddenly we're convinced we need something we never knew we wanted. Not tracking expenses can also lead to a bad money habit of emotional spending. When we're feeling stressed or anxious, it's easy to turn to retail therapy to try to lift our mood. But this can quickly become a vicious cycle, leading to even more stress and anxiety. Impulse shopping is especially dangerous in today's digital age, where we're constantly being bombarded with ads and promotions. It's easy to get caught up in the excitement of a good deal, but more often than not, we end up buying something we don't really need. And let's not forget about the temptation of buying things just because they are on sale. Habit two is eating out too much. When it comes to eating out, frequency is key. Grabbing a meal out every once in a while isn't a big deal and can be a nice treat, but making it a regular habit can quickly rack up a huge bill that drains your wallet. A couple restaurant meals a week can suddenly mean you're spending hundreds of dollars each month on restaurant food. Cooking at home is a simple yet incredibly effective way to cut back on expenses and keep more money in your pocket. By swapping those frequent restaurant visits for homemade meals, you can save around $500 to $700 per month, or even more, depending on how often you eat out. Plus, cooking at home allows you to control your ingredients, leading to healthier meals and better nutrition. Imagine all the extra cash you could use for savings, paying off debt, or treating yourself to something special, without the guilt. Another problem is buying lunch every day instead of packing a lunch. It might seem like a small, manageable expense, but it can actually add up to hundreds of dollars per month. Many people think, I never go to restaurants, but often forget that grabbing lunch every weekday is essentially the same thing. Those daily lunches, whether it's a $10 sandwich, a $12 salad, or even a $7 coffee and pastry can add up fast. By the end of the month, you could be looking at a significant chunk of change that could have been saved or used more wisely. That's money you can put towards your savings, a weekend getaway, or even paying off debt faster. So, next time you're tempted to buy lunch out of convenience, remember the big picture and how those small, daily savings can lead to substantial financial benefits over time. Bad habit number three is not taking advantage of employer-matched retirement accounts. This is like leaving free money on the table. If your employer offers a 6%, 8%, or even higher match, you absolutely need to contribute at least that much yourself. Why? Because every dollar your employer matches is an instant 100% return on your investment. By not contributing enough to get the full match, you're essentially throwing away hundreds, even thousands of dollars each year. And it doesn't stop there. These are investment dollars, so you're also missing out on the magic of compound interest. Over the course of your career, this could add up to tens of thousands, 
if not hundreds of thousands, of dollars lost. Think of it as a snowball effect. The more you contribute and get matched, the bigger your retirement savings grow, exponentially increasing over time. Don't let this golden opportunity slip through your fingers. Max out that employer match and watch your future wealth soar. Habit four is borrowing the maximum you are approved for. It's crucial not to borrow as much as you can. Just because you got approved for a large mortgage or car loan doesn't mean you can actually afford it. Approval doesn't equal affordability. Taking on maximum debt can squeeze your finances tight, leaving little wiggle room for savings, emergencies, or even daily expenses. It is the bank's and salesperson's job to lend you as much as possible. The salesperson is most likely paid by a percentage, so the more they convince you to borrow means a higher paycheck for them. Before you borrow, work out what you can comfortably afford for a mortgage or car payment and don't go above that. Imagine the stress of high monthly payments draining your bank account, making it tough to pay off existing debts and derailing your financial goals. Instead, keep your borrowing reasonable. This way, you maintain a healthy balance between debt and savings, ensuring you can handle life's surprises and stay on track with your financial dreams. Remember, just because you can borrow big doesn't mean you should. Keep your financial future bright by borrowing smart and staying savvy. Finally, step five, lifestyle inflation. Lifestyle inflation is bad because it prevents you from building wealth and securing your financial future. When your income increases, it can be tempting to upgrade your lifestyle with better cars, nicer homes, or more luxurious vacations. However, if you increase your spending in line with your income, you won't have extra money to save or invest. This means you're not growing your emergency fund, paying off debt faster, or investing for retirement. By saving more when you get a raise, you can build a financial cushion, reduce financial stress, and create opportunities for long-term wealth and financial independence. So, what can you do to start making a change? The first step is to become more mindful of your spending habits. Remember, financial freedom is just as much about staying in the savings mindset as it is about attaining certain numbers. Take some time to review your expenses and identify areas where you can cut back. Start tracking your expenses and make a budget that works for you. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more financial advice and tips. Share your own money-saving tips in the comments section below and let's work together to take control of our financial health. Until next time, keep thriving.